Okay, today we are sewing an apron, and we're going to start off with on the pocket. And uh, the first step is to figure out which one is your right side. And once you've determined that, you're going to um, fold it over to the wrong side a quarter of an inch and iron it. And then you're going to sew, you're going to fold it down three quarters of an inch, and you're going to press it again. And then once it's all nice and pressed, we're going to stitch it all along that edge um, to keep it down. And then I'll be right back. Okay, now that you have stitched the top of your pocket down to hem it, you're going to take the sides, all the edges, and you're going to turn them under a quarter of an inch and iron, and then you're going to turn them under another quarter of an inch and iron. And you're going to do that all the way around your pocket. And also you're going to make a mark on the center of your pockets right here. Make it to where you can see it. And you're going to make a mark on the center of your skirt at the top and at the bottom. And you're going to take your pocket and you're going to put it in the center. And the top of your skirt is going to be shorter than the bottom. So make sure that your opening that you hem is on the top. And I'm going to put the top of my pocket about three to three and a half inches below the top and then make sure it's on the center. And once we lay down, I'm going to pin all along these edges and I'm going to sew down where I pin. I'm going to sew the pocket down right here and then I'll be right back. Okay, we just finished sewing our pocket on and notice when I sewed my pocket on, I started right here, came up, went over, and I went down and I went all the way around and did the same in the back, popping on the other side. And then once I finished, I went through and I pinned all down the center of my pocket. And now I'm going to sew down the center to create two separate pockets. And you don't have to do that if you just put like one big pocket, but it's kind of nice to have two pockets. Okay, we've just finished sewing our pocket down to create two pockets. And the next step that we're going to do is we're just going to hem the side only the two sides. So how we're going to do it is we're going to turn this under a quarter of an inch once and then we're going to turn it over and under again a second time to conceal that. And then we um, press it and now that it's nice and pressed we're going to sew it all along that edge. I'm going to do that on both sides and then I'll be back with the next step. Okay, I just got through hemming the sides both sides and I give it a good press. This fabric press is really nice. And now I'm going to take my two waist ties. They should be two and a half inches high by 20 inches long. And I'm going to find the right side and I'm going to put the right side down, right side to right side on the top. And you'll have a little bit of overhang and that's fine. And I'm also going to do the same thing. I'm going to find the right side of the second one and I'm going to put it on the wrong side so that you have a sandwich like this. And then I'm going to sew all along the top of this with a quarter inch seam. Okay, we just got through sewing our sandwich to create our waist. So that means whenever you turn it right side up, you're going to have your contrasting waist. And before we do anything else with this piece, we're just going to set it aside and we're going to grab our two bodice pieces. And on your two bodice pieces, you're going to have marked lines for where you need to gather. So we're going to gather before we do anything else. So you're going to, is what you're going to do to gather is you're going to increase your stitch length to the highest your machine can go. And you're just going to sew a really quick stitch right here. And then you're going to leave long tails. And you're going to do the same thing right here and leave long tails. And we're also going to do it on our lining piece. So, so we're going to have sewn four different areas um, with basting stitches. Okay. I have sewn my gathering from here to here. And then I also mark the centers. So I mark the center of each bodice piece. And then I mark the center on my apron right here so that I can make sure that my center of the bodice is centered to the center of the pocket whenever I attach it. Um, so now I'm going to gather. So you're going to notice that 
um, between each bit. It's four and a half inches right now, but I'm going to pull the bobbin string and as I pull it, it's going to create some gathers and I want to gather it to where the four and a half becomes two. And once I have each gather, then I can attach it onto the bodice, I mean onto the skirt. Okay, so see, I have one gathered, I'm going to do the other, and then after I've done this with all, with all four places, the two on the, the main and then the two on the lining, um, then I'll be right back, and I'll show you how we're going to attach it to our waist. Okay, um, I have finished gathering um, under the bodice, and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to have marked on the white the centers and I'm going to put them right sides together. So on one waist tie, I'm going to have right sides together with one bodice and on one and the other bodice is going to be um, on the wrong side with um, the right sides together. And is what I did was I marked the center mark and then I marked six inches out onto each side of it. And I did that on both on both waist on both waist pieces and is what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the edge of the bodice with that six that mark that is six inches out. And so do you see how I'm going to need to make sure my gathering is tight enough that it fits into this space. And I'm going to do that on each side. So you see how my I mean, that's a washable marker, but the edge of that bodice lines up and that's where I'm going to start sewing. And I'm going to sew the lining of the bodice to the back waist with the right sides together and I'm also going to sew the front bodice to the front waist with the right sides together. And so remember you're six inches out into the middle and it's gathered all between that. And then you're another six inches out to the middle oh, and then this needs to line up right there. And when you sew that, you want to stop, you want to start and stop a quarter inch away from that. So you're going to have a quarter inch not sewn at all. Even you can go up to three eighths of an inch, but you need to leave some of this. So you see where this clip is, that is where I'm going to start sewing and I'm going to leave this free. Okay, we have sewn the front, or that's the, the long side. That's the lining onto that, and then we have sewn the front. We have our gathers under, under each bust, and now we are going to, remember how I had you start a quarter inch with just a quarter inch left? Well, we're going to take the lining of the bodice and the front of the bodice, and we are going to line up each side, and we are going to sew the sides here. So we're going to start up here. We're going to move our waist piece out of the way and not catch that in this seam. So I'm going to clip it and show you what I'm talking about. This is going to make it to where your bodice is lined. So you see how I am sewing together so on the same side, right sides together. And you, this is just going to be left alone for now. We're only sewing along here. This, uh, it, it's your under your arm, your arm side right there. So you're going to do it on that side. And then we're going to go on to the other side where we've also left a quarter inch right here. And we're going to put those together and sew along that. I'll be right back. Okay, I just finished sewing up um, the side of the bodice, and this is what it looks like on this side. I went all the way to the top, and I back stitched, and I did that on both sides. And now I'm going to take my waist tie, and on your waist ties, you're going to find your right side, and this edge that's, remember how we had some that was um, hanging off of the end? Well, we're going to take that, and we're going to put the right side of that against the right side of this. And it's going to hang off. There's going to just make sure it's centered. And we're going to sew 
with a quarter inch or or actually so to where you're getting closer to that. So if you have a little bit more than a quarter inch overhang, you might need to take a, a wider seam allowance to, to get that. But just make sure that you're not catching any of your skirt in. Um, so we're going to sew the top of that and we're going to do it on this side and we're going to do the same on this side. And I just finished sewing my waist ties on. So you have the front of your waist and the back of your waist and we sewed them right sides together. And now when you flip it, see it kind of looks like, it looks like this. And we did the same thing over here. And now we're going to need to deal with this edge. So what we're going to do to close this up is we're going to take this big long waist tie and we're going to put it right sides together. And you're going to start on the end of it and we're going to sew with a quarter inch. We're going to start at the top and then go down and we're going to sew from here all the way and then once we start getting closer to the waist of the apron we're going to need to stop. So you're going to go as far as you can hopefully to here and then once you get there we're going to stop and then we're going to need to turn this with a tube turner and get it right side out. We're going to do that on both sides. Okay, we um, just got through sewing one of the waist ties and I turned it right side out and so I, this is how much I have left after I turned it right side out. And then this is the other side before I turned it right side out. So I sewed down one end into the next and whenever I'm done I'm going to clip this corner right here so that it lays nice and flat. Um, just make sure you're not clipping through your stitches. And then I sewed as far as I could until I need to turn it out. And you can use any kind of um, turner to do yours. I use a chopstick and I will put the chopstick at the end. It takes me a few minutes to get started. And then once I have it started, I'm just pushing that chopstick through because I want to turn this, this big long tube right side out. And then my chopstick is looking for the way out. See? And then now I'm going to use this chopstick to kind of make the different corners a little better. And then I'm going to get my chopstick out. Okay, and now your next step, now that you have both of your waist ties right side out, this is what you're going to have. And you're going to have these two holes right here. So is what I'm going to do is I'm going to take to the ironing board and I'm going to press this entire strap to where it's really flat. And then whenever I get to this part to press, I'm going to press the seam allowance under. I'm going to press the back and the front so that this is going to lay like this. And once I've pressed it really well and I have it looking like this, I am going to top stitch this entire um, tie, all the way along the tie, all the way to the bottom. It's going to be one long top stitch. You're going to make sure you whenever you're top stitching that this seam stays right feet and I'm going to remove that marker where I marked the center. And then this is how you're going to close this waist tie is when you go back to top stitch because the seam allowance is going to be pressed under and you're just going to top stitch it to where the seam allowance all stays under. And once I have finished pressing and sewing that, I will be right back with the next step. Okay, I'm back. I just got through top stitching all of my waist and my waist ties down. Um, and now that part is finished. And I also removed some of my um, markings that were water soluble with um, some spray. And now we're going to work on our bodice. And what's left on our bodice is that we need to finish this neckline. And since this is fully lined, um, we can, it's easy to just sew that together. If it wasn't lined and for some reason we just wanted to do one piece, we would have needed to use bias binding on the edges here and bias binding on here. Uh, but to make it easier, I lined it. And so since it's lined, we're going to be sewing um, right sides together of our bodice. So to do that, we're going to kind of bunch it to where our skirt is inside of it so that we can put the right sides of our bodice together. So we're going to sew 
You see how I flipped it out like that? So all I'm doing is trying to line up this bodice, this neckline, um, to where the right sides are together. So I'm going to sew here, and I'm going to keep on sewing. And I might even have to do it, since I can't fit all that bodice in there, I think I'm just going to do um, one side of the neck, and then shove it through, and then do the other side of the neckline. Um, and then once I've sewed it to where the right sides are together, then I can turn it right side out. And I'll be right back. Okay, I just got to sew my neckline, and it looks like this. I did not sew um, the last three and a half inches of it, because I, I kind of need that, that gap to turn this to the right side. So if I would have sewn all the way to the shoulder, I would have had the smallest hole to pull all this through. And that's what I'm going to do is just leave a bigger gap, and I can always, when I top stitch my neckline, just um, I can fold that seam allowance under. So you won't really notice, but it just made this turning this to the right side a lot easier because this hole is kind of small to do that. So I'm going to I'm just turning this right side out after doing the neckline. Um, now that I have it all the right side out, I'm going to press it really well, and I'm going to top stitch it. And when I press it, you see how, since I sewed all the way to the top of that, it's going to be easy to press and top stitch there. But when I get to that shoulder where I had turned it through, I'm just going to um, turn the seam allowance under as if I had sewn it um, together and you're, you're still going to have raw edges at the top and you're just going to leave that alone until the next step. So, okay, now I'm going to press and top stitch this and I'll do that. I just finished top stitching and I, I started here and I went ahead and did top stitch all the sides, across, down the neckline, over, and all the way to here. And then I gave it a good press and I um, used the water to get out some of my markings. And this is the point where the base of your apron is done all we need to do is add the neck strap and finish the bottom. And we can finish it just with a hem or with a ruffle. Um, but we're going to try it on at this point. And the reason we're going to try it on is, is this bust has a lot of room in it. So if you are a, a busty, well-endowed person, this is going to fit you wonderfully. But if you're not, then you're going to have some gaping um, there. So is what you're going to do is you're going to try it on. And when I tried mine on, I noticed that my gaping was right here. So you're going to create a fun little plate and bring this in. And um, there's lots of different ways you can do it um, to bring it in. But it's how I'm going to do it is to pull that backwards. And I'm going to pin it to where I'm bringing this in. And then these, this is going to go over. And I'm just going to um, attach it right here to bring this in and this is going to be based on your own fitting when you've tried it on how much you need to bring this in here but it's going to create your cuts for your bust and it's going to make it to where this is not gaping um, and this isn't going to be necessary for people who are more long down here or you might just want to do it if you have um, more narrow shoulders and um, but either way you're going to be um, stitching this right here and I'll show you once I finish. Okay, I have just finished sewing my strap. Here is one that I've already finished and turned right side out. And here's what it looked like when I was sewing it. So I sandwiched this part and then I sewed, you know, a few inches. And then I stopped because I got to that. I, you don't want to catch any of this bodice in this seam. And then I went over here and I started on this short end and I came this way. And then I stopped as soon as I got to this bodice again. And you see how you have this empty part right here. And this is the part that you're going to turn it through. Um, make sure that you back stitch at the beginning and end of each of those. And see, look, you have a strap. Um, and then once I have these turned right side out like this, I'm going to press and I'm going to top stitch. And whenever I get to that hole where I turned it right side out through, I'm just going to press that seam allowance under. And I'll close the hole whenever I top stitch over that part. Um, I'm going to get my handy seam turner. Um, tube turner I mean, my chopstick that I like to use. I'm going to turn this right side out um, and top stitch and press these um, and then we'll be ready to work on the ruffle and finish the bottom. Okay, I just finished sewing my straps. I'm going to give them a nice good press. You see how 
nice and clean that looks where it meets on both sides is really pretty. Um, and the only thing, oh, and then we need to cut our strings and all that. And the only thing that we need to finish is our bottom. And I'm going to finish mine with a ruffle. Um, if you don't like the look of the ruffle, you can always just sew a straight on there. Or you could have even cut your skirt longer and just hem it. Um, but in order to do the ruffle, is what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the center just so that I can keep my gathers even. So I... I marked the center of this one and I'm going to mark the center of this one. And I'm going to sew a long basting stitch. I'm going to put my stitch length at the highest it'll go and I'm just going to do it all along the top of this. And I'm going to gather the top of this ruffle to meet, to meet this. But before I, I gather it, I'm going to go ahead and hem the sides by turning them under a quarter of an inch and pressing and top stitching that. And I'm going to hem the bottom um, so that it's nice and hemmed once I attach it. Okay, so we have some hemming to do all along the, the edges, and then we have some gathering to do once we're done hemming. Do that. Okay, we are on our last step. I have finished hemming the ruffle. I just turned it under three eighths of an inch twice along the sides and all along the bottom, and then I sewed my base, my gathering stitches, one long basting stitch all across the bottom of the, the ruffle. And then I matched up my centers where I had marked. I matched that. And then I gathered until the ruffle was the same size as the bottom. And I did that all in here. And now I'm going to sew, and this unraveled a lot, so I'm going to use probably a half an inch seam allowance here just so that I can make sure to catch all these ruffles. And once I sew that, I'm also going to go back and serge this seam. Um, these are um, right sides together. And I'm sewing right here along the wrong side. And um, you're going to need to, since woven fabric will fray and you're using woven fabric, um, you're going to want to somehow finish the seam. So either with a really tight zigzag stitch all along after you've sewn, or you could even use bind binding if you want. Um, I'm just going to use my basic serger once I'm done sewing this together to go and finish all this to keep it from unraveling. And this is the only part of the project where you're going to need to finish the seam. Um, okay, I just finished sewing on my ruffle and I sewed it with the right sides together like this and then now and then once I finished sewing it I went over and um, overlocked the sides of my serger just so that this seam was finished and now the only last thing you have to do is we are going to top stitch this seam down um, towards the skirt and this the only reason that we're doing this is because otherwise this ruffle is going to kind of flip up and by top stitching that, it's going to help it lay down nice and flat. Um, and so you're going to want to pick coordinating fabric to the, I'm sorry, coordinating thread to your fabric. And then you are all finished with your apron. Give it a good press, and you're done. Thank you for watching.